What's up everyone, welcome back to the Build Studio. So in today's video, I'm gonna be diving into a full review of this AnchorMake M5 3D printer. Now, when it was first announced about a year ago, this is a machine that would claim that it would set new records with its blazing fast print speeds, AI monitoring, and auto time-lapse features. But since then, a number of different printers have already been released. So is this still really as groundbreaking as it sounds? especially in an industry that is highly saturated and competitive. Well, after spending weeks with this printer, I'm here to share my honest thoughts and feedback. I'll share with you the good, the bad, and everything in between. So stay tuned. Okay, so unboxing this AnchorMake M5 3D printer was a breeze. With its three-step setup, I had this printer assembled and ready to go in about 15 minutes. In fact, this is probably one of the easiest to assemble 3D printer bed slingers available today. Now you'll notice it does have an extremely well-built frame made up of some very high quality materials. And the aluminum alloy frame feels super sturdy and the design is sleek and modern. It definitely does feel like a premium machine with all of its finishes and LED light accents. The 7x7 auto leveling system works seamlessly during setup and it gave me a solid first layer, which I think is crucial for quality prints. Okay, so with that in mind, let's jump right in and talk really quickly about the features. This M5 3D printer boasts 500 millimeters per second print speeds, AI camera monitoring, auto time lapse, and remote control through the Anchor Maker app. Now the print volume is a decent 235 by 235 by 250 millimeters cube, and it is compatible with PLA, PETG, ABS, and a number of other different filaments. But those of you that do have the newer printers from Bamboo Lab, Creality, Elegoo, and even other more prominent 3D printer brands might find this build size a little bit smaller than you might like. This printer is definitely not geared towards more advanced users who are looking to create more large scale prints. Now, when it comes to the print head, the extruder does have a maximum temperature of 500 degrees Fahrenheit or 260 degrees Celsius, and the build plate can reach maximum temperatures of 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. The 4.3 inch touchscreen on this printer is very responsive and intuitive, making it easy to navigate. I also love the double cooling fan system that directs airflow precisely onto the print object, which also helps manage the print quality at faster speeds. Now, at the heart of this printer is a dual Xburst 1.2 GHz and 240 MHz CPU with about 8 gigs of eMMC memory running on an operating system built on Linux. Now that in itself should be enough power and storage to cover any kind of 3D hobby print job that you have in mind. And then when it comes to printers, let's talk about what's really important, real world performance. This printer is pretty fast. It isn't the fastest printer on the market, but on normal mode, it produced excellent quality prints. For example, this Benchy with very minimal layer lines. Now, if you do want to print faster, switching to boost mode, of course, gives you faster results, but of course, with slightly reduced quality but it still is better than many printers in this price range. Now, here's a comparison of prints in both modes, one in boost and one in normal mode. So as you can see, there is only a slight difference in terms of quality when switching between normal and the faster boost printing speeds. I'd even say that the print quality is just as good as the quality that you would get from a Bamboo Lab printer. Now, one thing to note, and this is an issue that I ran into when setting this thing up, Connecting to this AnchorMake M5 with the app was easy at first. However, after the first firmware update and a quick reboot, I was not able to connect to the printer again wirelessly. I tried both of my Wi-Fi networks without any kind of success. And after reading several forum posts, it doesn't sound like I was the only one experiencing this issue. There were a number of fixes and recommendations, including completely disabling the five gigahertz band for my router, just to get it to work. But because I didn't want to sacrifice an important wireless configuration for my home, 
I decided to try other things. Ultimately, what ended up working for me was going to the settings menu on the printer itself and restoring it to the factory. What's good about that is the updated firmware remained intact, but whatever the machine did during the reset allowed me to reconnect to my wireless, and to this day, it still works and connects to my network flawlessly. So that's a tip for anyone experiencing the same issue. Now, when it comes to print quality, this is where the M5 shines. Even at higher speeds, the output is impressive. As you can see, I printed this baby shark and its articulating movement works perfectly. It came out perfectly with very little noticeable layer lines and it just looks like a high quality print. In addition to that, I also did print the test file that came with the 3D printer itself. And as you can see, it turned out very nicely. The only issue that I had with the test print is one of the buttons uh, for the measurement circles is fused to the print itself. Normally all five of these would just fall right out, but the first one, the 0.2 dot, is fused to the print itself. But I'm sure that can be fixed just by adjusting some of the settings on the printer itself. Everything else turned out very nicely. The spacing, the overhangs, and just the overall quality itself turned out very nice. Now, like I mentioned, even at higher speeds, the output is impressive. So as you can see, I printed this long articulating dragon, which turned out very nicely and was extremely high quality, even at higher speeds. I also printed this vase out, and as you can see, the quality is impeccable. It just looks amazing, and the layer lines are hardly noticeable and the detail in the print itself is top quality. Overall, after using this printer for the past couple of weeks, I'd say this AnchorMake M5's print quality and output matches that of the Bamboo Lab printers themselves. However, one call out is the AI camera monitoring. Now this is a flagship feature that is highlighted by AnchorMake. This was a disappointment. It failed to detect print failures multiple times, including intentional spaghetti messes. While the idea is great, the execution does fall a little bit flat. Now I'm not sure if it's because the AI is still a work in progress that will be enhanced through future updates, or if it's a feature that just didn't go as planned. But hopefully AnchorMake is working on improving the AI features for this printer in future updates. Now the camera built onto the side of the LCD screen does allow for real-time monitoring through the app up to 720p with time-lapse videos and records at 1080p at a frame rate of 30 frames per second. It also has night vision that utilizes infrared and LED lights, which of course is a nice feature. That being said, the auto time-lapse videos also need improvement. The video itself doesn't align with the bed consistently between shots making the final video pretty jerky and unusable. And also, because of the placement of the camera itself, it also doesn't provide the best angle for capturing your print footage. And that's because of how low the camera is. You don't really get to see the footage of the first few layers of your print, and it kind of just looks weird at its angle. Now, another major downside and call out for this 3D printer is that this printer is loud, even when idle. It's not ideal for spaces where noise is a concern. Now the good thing I discovered about this printer because of a long print job that I had going is that the print continuation feature is amazing. Because one of the sample prints that I was printing, which was this vase in particular, was a long print job that overlapped a work-related call. I had to shut down this printer during the call itself while it was printing, which had me thinking I would need to start all over after my call was finished. Now I was pleasantly surprised when I turned the printer back on after my call and the printer gave me the option to continue the print where it left off. And as you can see, the print turned out perfectly without any sign that shows that I had stopped the print in the middle of the job. So based on my initial use and experience with this printer, is the AnchorMake M5 worth it? Well, let's break it down starting with some pros and cons. First the pros. It's fast and easy to set up and has an intuitive interface. It's got exceptional print quality in normal mode and really good quality at faster speeds. It's also got versatile filament compatibility, which is always nice. 
And then it does have a decent print volume for those of you who are just starting out or looking for a printer for easy everyday use objects. And then finally, it's also got a sturdy build quality and very nice accents, which I think is one of the best in the industry. And then of course, let's talk about some of the cons that I discovered during my initial use, which some of them I did mention before. First one being the AI camera monitoring and time-lapse features, which I think need major improvements and can hopefully be fixed or improved in future software updates. It's also super loud even when idle. Now the fans never seem to turn off, which is a feature that I hope they can add in a future firmware update. And then lastly, connectivity challenges and issues after the initial setup, which a lot of people seem to be facing and hopefully can fix it as easy as I was able to fix my issue. At its current price of about $350, this AnchorMake M5 offers impressive features for its price, especially for beginners and new 3D printing hobbyists. The only issue is that not all of those features are fully fleshed out, but with the printer still on pre-order, hopefully a lot of these issues will get addressed before it gets to any of you that have ordered it or plan to order it, or for those of you who already have it, hopefully through software updates. While this printer doesn't live up to every single promise, like the AI monitoring, its print quality and speed make it a solid choice for anyone who's just starting out, especially if you're new and just learning to use 3D printers. If you're looking for a fast, capable printer and can handle its quirks, this M5 is definitely worth considering. So as you can see, most of the prints that I tried out turned out amazingly smooth with exceptional quality. And it's for that fact alone that I will recommend this printer for anyone who is just starting out, who's looking for an affordable printer that does an excellent job when it comes to quality and even speed. Okay, so that is it for my initial impressions after using this for two weeks and my review. If you found this video helpful, please make sure you like and subscribe and drop your thoughts in the comments section. Please also make sure you ring that bell icon to get notified when I post new content. Until next time, see ya.